Okay, um, and finally, I'm going to explain how uh, we can do uh, the method of Lagrange multipliers with two equality constraints. This is not going to be on the exam, right? So it's just for your information. So if you want, you can just skip the, this part of, of the lecture. All right, um, now, essentially it is very similar. So only instead of uh, one Lagrange multiplier, we're going to have two Lagrange multipliers, right? So uh, if, if we have two, uh, one objective function and two constraints, then in order to implement the method of Lagrange multipliers, we can form the Lagrange function uh, with as a function of five variables, x, y, z, lambda, and mu. So lambda and mu are Lagrange multipliers. And th this is going to be f minus lambda g minus uh, mu h. Well, here I'm assuming that the constraints are actually equals to zero. And then uh, we find partial derivatives of the, this function with respect to all the variables, x, y, z, uh, and with, with respect to Lagrange multipliers, lambda and, and mu, and equate all of them to zeros. Well, and you, you can imagine that if, if we have like a lot of variables and a lot of constraints, the number of constraints should be smaller than the number of variables. Then what we do is basically we just form a similar uh, similar expression, right? So it's just for each constraint, we are going to add the, the, this term minus Lagrange multiplier times that, that constraint into the Lagrange function. And um, the Lagrange Lagrangian function is going to be a function of many variables. So it's going to be a function of the original variables and Lagrange multipliers. And then we just find its stationary point. So th th this is how it works, right? So um, basically, then just apply the method. So here is um, the diagram. I hope it clarifies. Now, um, let me go through an example of um, um, a method of Lagrange multipliers with uh, two constraints in three dimensional, well, three variables and two constraints. It is fairly complicated uh, because, you know, it's just there's going to be uh, five equations here. So two, three variables plus two constraints, there's going to be five equations. Um, let, let me still do it. Let me still do it, J just to, to, show, to show an example how, how it works. So um, first we write the Lagrange function and it is going to be a function of x, y, z. And there are two constraints, so there, there's going to be two Lagrange multipliers, say lambda and mu. This is going to be uh, x plus 2y plus 3z minus lambda times the first constraint, x minus y plus z minus 1 minus mu times the second constraint, x squared plus y squared minus 1. Okay, so the next step is to find stationary points of this Lagrangian function. So we need to, to find the derivatives with respect to x. Okay, so with respect to x is 1. Uh, minus lambda minus 2 mu x. It should be equal to 0. Uh, the derivative with respect to y is uh, 2 um, plus lambda uh, minus 2 mu y should be 0. The derivative with respect to z is going to be uh, 3 um, minus lambda, and that's it, equal to 0. The derivative with respect to lambda is essentially just our first constraint, well, with the minus sign, minus x minus y plus z minus 1, should be equal to 0. And the derivative with respect to mu is our second constraint with the minus sign, x squared plus y squared minus one should be zero. Okay, so uh, let me unwrap the, the, these equations one by one. So uh, the last two equations are just our, the, the same as our constraints. So x squared equal, sorry, plus uh, y squared equals one. Equals one. And this is x minus y plus z equals 1. 
Okay, so from the third equation, oh, we see that, okay, very convenient, right? So three minus lambda is zero. So we, we can just immediately solve for lambda. So lambda is three. And then we can substitute lambda equals three into these two equations. So one minus uh, th three is negative two, right? So negative two minus two mu x is zero. And two plus three is five minus two mu y is zero. Okay, uh, now the, the plan is clear. I mean, it looked kind of complicated in the beginning, but now since we are able to immediately solve for lambda, the, 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 the plan is clear, right? So we can, um, so the, and it is actually more or less always advisable to do this. So we can solve for, um, we can express X and Y as, uh, functions of mu and substitute it into the uh, last equation and then find mu and then automatically we will find x x and y right so we're going to solve this for x and y so x and y are going to be some functions of mu and they, they, this is easy to do i believe so uh here uh, two just cancels out so um mu x is minus one and here, um, two mu y is five. Solving for x and y, we get that x is minus one over mu, and y is five over two mu. Okay, so now we have our last equation, x squared plus x squared uh, plus y squared is one. Uh, so let me do this. Well, th this is, by the way, the illustration. So the minimum value is somewhere here, and the maximum value is somewhere here, I guess. Um, so I have already written down the Lagrangian function and its partial derivatives and equated them to zero, right? So uh, what I have derived is that um, x equals minus 1 over mu. Uh, y equals 5 over 2 mu. Well, uh, and also x square plus y square equals 1. So now I'm going to just substitute it. Um, so x, x square is minus 1 over mu squared plus y is 5 over 2 mu squared. Should be 1. So one over mu squared plus 25 over four mu squared is one. Uh, I guess it's probably easier to write with four mu squared. So I'm going to write four, four here. So it's going to be 29, 29 over four mu squared should be one. So four mu squared is 29. So I guess uh, mu square is 29 over 4. So mu itself is going to be plus or minus square root of 29 over 2. Right, so and basically that's that's it. Um, so, you know, we have x, we have y, and we have just two cases from mu. Well, um, you may wonder what uh, z should be, but for z, you know, just, just remember that we have the other con the other constraint for z, right? So from this constraint, uh, z is really um, is really what is one minus x plus y. Okay, so z is 1 minus x plus y. So basically that, that's it. So there are two uh, possibilities for mu. For each of them, we can find x and y. In either case, we can find z via the, this formula z equals 1 minus x plus y. 
so that there's going to be two um, two candidates for the solution. So I guess one of them is going to be the minimum, the other one is going to be the maximum. So that, that's it. So let me just uh, quickly go through this. Um, well, the, the, there is the printed solution. So there is the system of equations that, that we have. Um, okay, so um, now they have derived this uh, equation that mu is plus or minus square root of 29 over two. So basically it just means that we need to consider two, two cases, right? So the first case is mu is square root of 29 over two right and then we use our um, um these equations well which um so x is minus one over mu and y is five over uh, two mu to derive x and y right so we have derived x and y here and then z is, is again, is just one minus x plus y, so we can find it. And then f of x plus y plus z, so this is, this is, you know, um, this was x plus two, two y plus three z. We can just directly compute it. So here, f of x plus y plus z is three plus square root of 29. And when mu is negative square root of 29 over two, then again, by exactly the same method, we can, find uh, what f of x, y, and z is going to be, and it is three minus square root of 29. So of course, three plus square root of 29 is the maximum, uh, and three minus square root of 29 is the, the minimum. So that's basically it. Okay, so that's all for today. So thank you for your attention.